Welcome to Startup to Storefront, presented by Aura Bora. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Joshua from Edge Theory Labs. Thanks for joining. Thank you for, for having me. For people who don't know, what does your company do? We do ice baths. <laughs> we have built the world's first portable all-in-one cold tub. So what that means is it's portable with the drop stitch inflatable technology, similar to the stand-up paddle board. So it's really, really durable when it's up. You can put your full weight on it. You can stand on it. Yeah. It's super durable. And the benefit is that it packs away into a backpack so that you can take it on the go. Or for someone like myself that lives in an apartment balcony and doesn't have a whole lot of space to put a big fixed wall tub, I can easily set it up there. And then the chilling unit, the chiller as we call it, plugs in a regular electric, hooks up to the tub, and circulates the water, keeps it clean, keeps it cold, as cold as 37, and also one of our models has hot tub mode, so it gets up to 105, oh, no which we love. Oh, that's pretty dope. Yep. What made you want to start this? What, what did you see in the marketplace that obviously there's been a cold plunge explosion to some extent, yeah. and, and cold therapy in general, uh, but what did you see? That's a, it's an interesting question because it certainly was not something my cousin, who's my co-founder, and I concocted up and said, we're going to get into the cold immersion space. Like it, <laughs> yeah. it, it felt like it was one big accident waiting to happen. And and, I, and there, I, I've noticed as well in talking with other founders that there there's oftentimes a through line with that where it's like, it basically got to the point where we couldn't not start this. Mm -hmm. And that came personally from my experience with cold water immersion and what it did for me and my healing journey, which I'm happy to dig into to any any degree of depth. But yeah, let's do it. How, when did you first, I guess, uh, discover or yeah. sort of feel the benefits of just cold therapy? Yeah, well, growing up in San Diego, I considered myself a sun creature. Like I love the warmth, the sand, and, um, and, then I, and I hated the cold. And I discovered this guy named Wim Hof, this crazy guy from the Netherlands on a podcast. And I heard him and his message was just deeply inspiring to me of the fact that we are in control of our own strength, health, and happiness. And that really resonated at a time. I had dealt with a lot of injuries growing up. I almost, I had a near, near death experience. I almost had to have my leg amputated from a really brutal injury. I had this injury called uh, compartment syndrome, which happens from blunt force trauma. So it was actually from a high school football injury, a really rare thing. And there was a second injury on top of that that actually pushed it over the edge. And what, what that me meant is that my muscle compartment basically filled with blood. And so there was no circulation going down my leg. Super painful, yeah. got really swollen, and finally got to the point where like, I need to go to the hospital to get some pain meds. And I get there, they did a test, and they're like, hey, we need to take you into surgery now. And we're like, okay. My parents were there like, can we get a second opinion in the morning? That seems a little rushed. And they're like, you can, but if it is what we think it is, then you're going to wake up with a dead leg and need amputation. So oh my like, God. Surgery sounds great. Oh my God. Yeah. So at 17, that was a lot, right? A lot for me. And at any age, at any age, no kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and then I, during that surgery, I had an out of body experience and, um, and it was, it was really wild and it, it was definitely the beginning of, of my spiritual journey, if you will. And, and even since I was born, I had collapsed lung minutes after I was born and I grew up as a, an active kid getting into trouble and, and, and broken bones here and there, but nothing more than the average. But then I had that injury a couple years later, I had, um, appendicitis, which is normal, but they messed up the surgery and um, nicked an artery, so I was bleeding internally to get blood transfusions. It was touch and go for a minute. So this is like a theme for me growing up of just, uh, and, and I had a lot of distrust in my body. And as a 19-year-old kid, I felt, I'm going to be in a wheelchair one day. What was the spiritual part that you felt like like something happened? Were you, was it a mindset thing? What did you see? Yeah, it's, I think it was that it forced me to pay attention to what's going on here and get out of my head and into my body. Like I, I didn't want to, for whatever reasons, but we, li we live in our minds, right? We Absolutely. live totally up here yeah. and there's this whole thing that's happening. There's this body wisdom that's whispering to us. There's this connectivity that we can have with our mind and our body that I believe can, can give us a lot of insight and answers. And, and so what it basically did was it forced me to pay attention and it forced me to be like, all right, I got to deal with this and I got to be, I got to get on this path of being healthy. And what does that mean? What does it mean to be healthy? What does it mean to be well? mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. So yoga was the big, the big trajectory changer for me, where it was the first time I was like, whoa, body, like, I love you. Thank you. You've been through so much. And I started feeling some flexibility and some movement. So I went deep down that path, became a yoga instructor and just like went, I just followed the learnings. Yeah. And then that led me to going on a Wim Hof method retreat out in Iceland. Okay. And that was when it felt like that was the last, that was like a big piece of the puzzle for me because I, I'm a big advocate and proponent of following the breadcrumbs. Like something interests you or you're passionate about or piques your interest, like 
follow that. There's probably something there for you. So it's almost like you had the, you had the body right, you had it conditioned, and now it's Correct. like, let me see if I can control the mind or, or quiet the mind. Exactly. And let me see if I can quiet the mind and I can get these two to work in unison, right, yeah. as well. What was the journey like? So when you're in Iceland, what is the program? What are you doing? Yeah, so it was with um, who's, someone who's become a close uh, mentor and a close friend of mine. His name's Joran de Brown. He was one of Wim's, he was Wim's first instructor who started doing retreats outside of Wim himself, so early on in the organization and was a former pro soccer player. He's got an amazing story. And it was with him and it was a week long expedition and it was intense. We did deep breathing sessions in the morning and then in the afternoon we would go out and do different adventures in the Iceland terrain. So a lot of cold exposure, right? So we would be going down to the lake, going in, doing shirtless hikes and it all culminated with climbing the mountain. We climbed a mountain on our, one of the last days in nothing but, you know, shorts. And that was just a folk, that was a moment of pushing, re, kind of recalibrating, resetting the boundaries of what we think we're capable of doing. It's like, you think that's crazy climbing a mountain and nothing but your shorts and freezing temperatures with wind gusts and the minus temperatures. That's nuts. Yeah. But it just reset that threshold of just how strong, how beautiful our bodies are, how intelligent we are, how capable we are and what we can achieve when we're really present in our body. Cause that's the only way you can do that is just be super Unfortunately present. Unfortunately so, yeah. Right? Yeah. And, the, and you reach a pain tolerance, it's a sort of a mental mindset that's just probably unparalleled to anything you were experiencing before. Absolutely. And how did this make you, how did this change your mindset in terms of sort of maybe you feeling like your body, like there was something wrong with you or like you were accident prone as someone would say, or totally. how did that, how did you sort of wrap your head around this for the first time? I love that question. And because it was a total resetting of that, it was a total resetting of that. And it was a total oh my goodness, my body's actually looking out for me. And in fact, so much so that it's leading me to be in this close connection with my body and my mind. Like this is, this is helping me. And is reframing that instead of like my body's failing me. It's like, no, our, our body gives us feedback. It's like a check engine light in your car. You're not mad at your car for having the check engine light. You're grateful. You're like, okay, cool. I got to go take a look under the hood. It's the same thing. I'm having these check engine lights light up all over my body. And I'm just like, body, you're failing me. And it's just like all my body wanted was for me to take a look under the hood. And in doing so, it opened up this portal for me of real deep healing and real peace, real mental health, true mental vitality and well-being, and and a, and a passion for something that led me to start a business for as well. Yeah. And, yeah. and and there was this one moment when we were doing a breathing session, the first breathing session there in Iceland. Have you ever done any? Like, sure. Okay, absolutely. Breath, okay, yeah. great. So I'm laying there. It was my first time, right? In Iceland, of course. I'm a bit of an extremist in that way. It's like, all right. My friends were like, all right, Josh is going to Iceland. Cool. There you go. <laughs> I love so it. So it was just it, one of the things that felt right. And I was like, this is uncomfortable, but I feel like I need to take this step. And so I went and in that first breathing session, I started, you know, I was breathing, breathing, started losing track of time and space. And all of a sudden, right at the site of where my appendicitis scar was, I, I felt this like little tingle and this like little tickle. And it like slowly, I just like kept breathing into it and it slowly worked its way up, 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 up to my throat. And then I just started crying my eyes out, just absolutely bawling, hysterically crying. Like I've never cried before in my life to that degree. And then all of a sudden around each of these different surgical incision points and points of injury, they all just felt like I, I was feeling the energy move through my body and release through this crying, right? And I was just like, I got out of that. And I, I felt the lightest, my shoulders were dropped. It was, it was so profound and truly life-changing to feel that, not only from that release, but also the fact that we have the ability to influence our body and our nervous system holding on to these things and how our body can hold on to certain trauma and memories. And we can have the, also the influence to be able to release that. And there's practices and tools and holistic ways to be able to help move that stuck energy, it's those emotions. Like the, the scar tissue mentally and physically was leaving you. Well said, well said, exactly. That's pretty wild. And, and so I was just like, this is, it's just crazy. Like I was just laying down breathing. Like I didn't take any drugs. Like <laughs> right. I didn't like, it yeah. felt like it's I did. It's on an ayahuasca retreat. It, seriously, and yeah. it felt like I did, but I'm just like, wait, this is something powerful here. There's something here. And then we couple that with the cold. Yeah. And then going into the cold and feeling a clearing and a shedding and then getting into the cold and feeling the strength and learning this lesson of strength and surrender and being able to 
breathe and relax into the intensity of the moment. And the combination of those two things, I came back and I was just like, this is wild. Like these are tools that I'm taking with me. And I became passionate about sharing with others, eventually became a Wim Hof Method certified instructor, leading retreats and, and just super deep down that rabbit hole. And, and eventually I got tired of buying ice. And then that's what <laughs> started the story into us actually yeah, founding the company. That's so amazing. First of all, it's a great story. It's a great backstory also, because it's almost like you solved your own problem, which is what generally entrepreneurs try to do. But right. for you, it was also a spiritual journey, mental journey, a healing journey. And then naturally you want to share that with the world. That's right. And you probably saw on the marketplace, it's like buying ice can get kind of tedious yeah. and then buying an expensive, or they can be really expensive to buy like, totally. you know, these blue cubes or these other devices. Yep. And so then what was your first step in being like, okay, I'm going to go start a company, but I want it to be, <laughs> you know, an affordable luxury for the, for everyone. Yeah. Well, the first step into that was coming back and trying to convince my roommates to let me hack a chest freezer and put it on our balcony sure, okay. apartment because right. that's so what you, you tried did, right? That? Yeah. I tried that. Yeah. They, they shot it down. They okay. thought I was crazy. So <laughs> okay. I'm grateful that they did. I yeah. wouldn't be sitting here otherwise. And then I went to my cousin. My cousin Rob was, he's, he's like a very handyman tinkerer kind of guy. And he, him and I were training for our first triathlon at the time. And so we were pushing our bodies. And when I got back from Iceland during that, I started being like, Hey, we're going to 7-Eleven. We're getting ice bags and we're putting it in and started doing that. And he got hooked on it too. And so we were both hooked on it. And so I said, Hey, can you help me build a chest freezer? And he didn't understand the concept at first. Like he didn't get that there was like a Facebook group with thousands of people trying to hack these things because otherwise you're spending 10, 15, $20,000 for the big fixed wall tub. And that was the only thing that was on the market. This was before the plunge was around as well. And so uh, he was just like, no, I don't want you to electrocute yourself in there, or, like lock yourself in the <laughs> coffin. Like that sounds like a horrible idea. That's so very pragmatic. Totally. And so he's like, well, let's, let's build, like, like let's do a DIY tub. So we did a DIY tub with mostly above ground pool equipment and build something and it, it scratched the edge. And we're like, cool, this is awesome. Is cool, yeah. And then it started failing, of course. And we're just like, oh, but wouldn't it be cool if we could do this? Or like, how do we get the filtration in here? So it was just really like, this was even before we were like, we need to bring this to market. It wasn't until we were like, okay, cool we see there's a path to make something for ourselves. And, and then we saw, wait, this could actually fit really well into the market because Plunge had just launched at the time. So they they were showing that there was a market for this, you know, middle tier $5,000 at home cold plunge, which I was shocked to see. I was like, amazing. Like I would have bought that. Like I, if, if that was around before, I would have bought that and called it a day. And, but that wasn't around. And, 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 and then the other part was I live in an apartment with a balcony. I can't put that up there even if I want to. I'm not going to try to crane something in. So like, how do we make something practical, more practical in that way? How do we perhaps make something that when we go up to drive up to Santa Cruz for our next triathlon, we can load it in the car and take it with us? Like, that would be cool. Yeah. And so we started thinking about how can we potentially introduce something portable that is also self-cooling and self-cleaning? Like, that would be cool. And we discovered that we could do that through isolating the tub that holds the water and then the chilling unit. And so we worked for two years in designing that chiller unit, brought the first of its kind to the market that had the filter. You know, we brought the filter housing inside. So it's just one tube in, one tube out that connects to any, any body of water and plugs into regular electric. So we started on these parameters of like, okay, it'd be really cool if we could do this, 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 and this, and we can make it one horsepower. So it's four times as powerful as, as the current offerings on the market. Like that would be awesome. Yeah. And we can make hot tub mode. So we're just like, what are all these cool ways we can do it? And, and then we stacked, we had this value stack and said, okay, I feel confident that we can spring this to market and somebody's going to buy it. We still had no clue that it was going to take off to the level that it has. But at the time we were just like, we think someone's like, that's a pretty compelling offer. And it was, it was the best offer at the time. Dur the during your market. two years, as you're going through sort of the R and D and trying to get it right, what did you learn that like the current market offerings don't have? And mm -hmm. so one of the things I've learned is some of these pumps, for whatever reason, if you put the water to a degree that's like a little too low, the pumps don't like it. And so they mm -hmm. stop working at a certain point. I don't know mm -hmm. what that degree is. And obviously there's a whole range of how these pumps are made and mm -hmm. they're cheap enough to replace. And so that's the other problem where it's like, they're not perfect, mm -hmm. uh, which is annoying from a customer experience perspective where you're like, what do you mean? It's not perfect. I spent whatever on it. Totally. And so yeah. what did you learn during that process where it's like, wow, the science isn't here. You know, it just doesn't exist yet for what needs to be refined. What'd you learn? Yeah. I think that the, the biggest thing for us was being able to bring in the filtration into the same unit into the same box as cooling because one of our earlier prototypes and and most of the other ones out there it's like those, those are separate pieces like even in you know a big fixed wall tub like there's a lot of different pieces in there and different points and so that felt a little clunky because then you also need mo more more, more you know tubing, hoses more and pipe. tubing yeah, and exactly. why and, and there's just more failure points and there's a lot more happening so for us i think the big opportunity was how do we bring that filtration 
into the same unit that can do cooling and also heating and be powerful enough to work in a commercial environment. So it was like those power, it was power, portability, purity in terms of keeping it clean. And then the price point, those were like our four P's that we, that we zeroed in on. And, and then what was your first product? What was the first one that you came to market with? So we came to market with the edge tub and we now have two variations of the edge tub. We have the edge tub elite and the edge tub legacy. And what we, what we realized through the first you know beginning of that, of, of selling that product was doing amazing. And we also wanted to innovate and have something a little bit more affordable, a little bit more entry level and something that could be a little bit lighter, smaller, easier to maneuver around. I mean, as in hardware, you start to do that as you, you know, you keep innovating and you're able to make parts smaller and more efficient. So we introduced the Edge Tub Legacy, which is our standard size tub with a cold only chiller because a lot of people, a lot of residential, they just use it on cold, like hot tubs cool. But a lot of people, the majority of people that are coming to buy the cold tub are buying it for the cold tub purposes. So we're able to do that and then shave off some price point there for our for our customer, which is great. So that's our entry level now, the Edge Tub Legacy. And how much is that now? That's 4,500. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then we have our Edge Tub Elite, which is 5,500. And that is that one horsepower commercial grade comp compressor and that chiller goes hot and cold. That's a big pump. Yeah. It's a big pump. Yeah. yeah. And then it also has um, the option to do an XL tub. So the XL tub was something that we realized very quickly, especially as we started working with a lot of athletes and professional sports teams. Like the tub itself was, was great. The standard tub was great for anybody up to six foot three. You can be in there full immersion, no problem. It's comfortable. Once you start getting above that, it's a little tighter. You can still do it. It just gets tighter. And so we realized there was a, there was a need just across the industry as well to have a bigger tub. So our XL tub is just absolutely banging. It's awesome. There's nothing like it on the market in terms of its size and its depth and, and its comfortability. You can fit two people in there comfortably. You can fit, you know, we have seven foot NBA athletes and, and NBA teams and NFL teams that travel with it and use it. And so they're putting their big boys in there. And, so. and when, when you first launched this, were you guys funding your, it yourself or did you go for funding at some point? So we took out a loan in the, in the beginning to get it up to the point. My cousin and I funded everything to, like to get to the market. point where yeah. we were like, all right, it's time to like press go on this. Yeah. And then we took out a, a loan that we've converted to investment since then okay. that um, that helped us push go on our first production run, the first half of the first production run. And right? how, many, how many did you make in your first 50. production? Okay. And that felt like, and at one point we were just like, maybe we make 20. Like we were just like, all right, 50 is the right number because like eventually we'll be able to sell 50. Like, yeah eventually like it could take some time but eventually we'll be able to sell 50. and where are you guys storing this um and and so well we we were we have a 3pl okay a third-party logistics warehouse in san diego that, okay. that that handles that um that's out of it thankfully yeah, otherwise, yeah, i was know, gonna say big, is this in your apartment too? yeah yeah seriously but so we we took out the bet basically we're like all right cool we're gonna press go on this and in the meantime we'll sell on a pre-order right and we'll sell with a great launching discount sell on a pre-order and see if we can sell it out and um Within 60 days, we sold it out, and we were like, Whoa. "Really? Yeah, wow. we sold it out fast." And we're and like, "And to who? Like, who was your customer? Who would? What surprised you when you went to market?" What's What surprised me was very early on, we realized people were going to buy this without seeing it in person. In the beginning, we were hitting. That's true. The, it's we kind of a big thing. Yeah, it's a big thing because yeah. in the beginning, like every sale that we made was coming from us working the, um, the half marathon, you know, booth over here. We're going to the Ironman village and setting up a booth here, or we're doing demos for friends and family. And I, th you know, I thought it's, it's a $5,000 product, like, and it's a physical product Like people are going to need to see it and get into it. So we were starting to build out it's this like whole strategy. Like a mattress strategy. store. You exactly. Know? Yeah. <laughs> and so we were starting to build out this whole strategy for building out a field marketing, massive field marketing team. And we was like, okay, this is what it's going to take. Like it's going to take tireless weekends of activating events. CPG mindset. The tastings that's right yeah exactly yeah and then all of a sudden the i'll never forget that first order that came through and i was just like hey rob did you did you talk to this guy named ryan who's like no did you and i was like no he just came through and purchased we're like what he found us on instagram came through and purchased and that was like whoa light bulb moment people are going to come through and purchase as like an e-commerce product they're going to come through and purchase and ship it yeah. so that was super surprising early on and then that allowed us to lean deeper into building out digital strategy and um, an organic strategy that is just you know totally crushed from day one um, we did all organic for the first year and just building that base so that was the most surprising thing right off the bat that's pretty cool so what is part of your digital strategy because i know you can lean into the science per se you can learn into your personal journey which sure. i think is uh really captivating actually like it's and it's unique to you right? yeah it's like no other founder right is going to have that story 
story right. and that's personal. And so there's a clear, like you're coming across pretty honestly. Right. And that's that great point. it clicks. Like, yeah. And so what, what is your digital strategy in that regard? Yeah. Our digital strategy in that regard is, um, is aspirational content in terms of showing like really and, and highlighting stories of people that are pushing the edge, pushing the boundaries in areas of their life, whether they're pro athletes, whether they're everyday high performers, whatever that might be. So it's, it's a mix of, I would say science, like there's different pillars to it. Science and education is definitely one, you know, highlighting team, personal story is definitely one. And then product of course, and product is, is, is big, especially when in, in the space that we're in leaning in on product is, is everything. And then the way that we all bring that to life is like with a really premium aesthetic and a really high quality way that our director of marketing cat has done an incredible job with since day one of building out and executing on that vision and and partnering with other types of influencers and athletes and celebrities that's helped us grow and and get to where we're at today undoubtedly especially from the digital side of being able to to be able to to do an exchange a gifted exchange where we give someone a unit and they're making content around it and they're going to be willing to make a lot more content around it because they really want the thing and it's and it's a higher ticket value of course it's like sending someone a a, a beverage or you know a snack pack or something like that which is so awkward by the way it's like they're just it's like i'm casually drinking this it's like no you're not (laughs) it's it's like it's like someone's recording this which is so weird to me yeah that's really interesting and so where does your mind go so you got you got customers you got a strategy working is your goal and i could totally be wrong about this but to democratize this is it is it like you want to make it as cheap as possible so as many people can enjoy it or is it like now you have some traction you know, what else can you do? Where mm-hmm. else can you take this? How big of a, what's the sort of, where does the strategy go? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And one of the things we identified early on as we launched and after we launched, you know, the, the me too's and the knockoffs started coming very, very yeah, quickly. So and, fast, and, yeah. and yeah, if you go on, if you go on Instagram now, it's, 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 it's just, it's, it's, it's just funny. It's everywhere, right? It's like <laughs> it gets in your algorithm and you're seeing ice baths left and right. And, um, we decided, we knew really early on that there was going to be we didn't want to partake in a race to the bottom in terms of trying to have the cheapest product out there because we wanted to make sure that we're able to support it firstly from a customer service standpoint and stand behind it and have super high quality. And the reality is right now, at least without major, major innovation with aquaponics and aqua chillers, there needs to be a major step up to really democratize it and having self-cooling, self-cleaning. Like we're really at that threshold already um, and sure you know we want to continue to bring it down over time but that's going to take lots of time and lots of yeah. iterations and ma- major product development so what we what, what our focus really is is to continue to build out a suite of other innovative trustworthy products for the everyday high performer right for the person that is really valuing their recovery their longevity their well-being their sports performance and wherever and you fall on that spectrum so there's other products right now that we're working on that we're really excited about to bring to market well, some, can you tell some really what? innovative nothing quite yet nothing <laughs> quite yet um but i will be very stoked to share once once we do once we do announce give me like a cool story so it's like let's let's say somebody buys one cool yeah. they have it they're using it for the first time where do they go how do they like what's the give me the unpacking give me the filling give me how long it takes to yeah. get cold oh, give me the customer journey it's great so we um the, the cool part of our product as well is that it comes via fedex or ups so it comes right okay. to your door and in three boxes it comes so it's you not on like a pallet it doesn't come on a pallet where there's massive delivery you need to get scheduled and you need to have you know a bunch of friends come over or hire someone to help move it to where it needs to be yeah i've been there yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it, it comes right, right to your door fedex <laughs> um and then it comes in a bo- one box has the chiller Another box has the tub because the tub packs down to a really small box. It's like 30 pounds, right? So the tub box is pretty small. And then there's another box that we have um, that we want to make the unboxing experience feel premium and feel exciting and feel like you're joining a part of something. So we have this really beautiful box that opens up. There's a hat in there. It's got your sanitizers, your, you know, your oxidizer. It has your, your filters, it has valves. And then there's like some cool takeaway postcards, some really cool branding. Our definition of, of legends as we refer to legends spelled with edge in the middle is, is, is what is what we how we refer to our community of people that are constantly pushing the edge and pushing those boundaries. And, and one of the things it says on there is to them, you might be crazy to us. You fit right in. Welcome to the family legend and it's just like this way of you know if, someone, awesome. if, you're, if you're spending five thousand dollars on an ice bath like you're probably an outlier in your in 100%, your group right 100%. like you're probably like what you're doing what yeah and so we are really cultivating this community and when we have our community space where we do breath work we do group plunges we do different types of, of educational resources and that's important to me as well but we want to bring people in and be like yeah you're not the only you're not the only so-called crazy one out there 
and and with that becomes that community. So that third box is is I love, and it's something that we've we've had more recently. So you so you get that, you open up, you scan the QR code, or go to the website, and then you follow this. It's a seven minute step by step video. It's like nine steps within first time setting up. Within twenty five minutes, you'll be fired up and ready to rock. We we've done it once. You do it more than once. You can do it pretty quickly, and you know, like I'm doing it in nine minutes now. Yeah. I think is our is our internal record <laughs> nine minutes for the whole setup and filling and turn on process. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. When you were saying that, it made me. I don't know why I thought this, and so I have to share it with you because it was like, you buy it. The unboxing is so key, and you took advantage of the moment. And I don't know why in my head I went like, it's almost like a MacGyver toolkit, right? Because in some mm. way you're, you know. And so I just thought like, oh, in in your head I visualized where maybe it's like literally not a briefcase, but like a toolkit and you yeah. open it and it's got like the valve, it's got your oxidizers, your, your filter. And I was like, Oh, that's dope. And then in my head, I was like, and you carry it with you. That's cool. And that's like, right. That's so it cool. made me think, I was like, Oh, that's really interesting how you're creating a moment mm. out of something that can be like Ugh, a valve. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. And so, absolutely. so my mind went there, which was, which I love was interesting. It. And then do you guys have like a, is there like a Spotify playlist or a playlist where you, maybe on your website where you do the breath work? Yeah. So we have a, um, through the platform called circle, we have a, we have a, our legend circle. And so on there we have guided audio immersions, which are awesome. So it's like, it's designed with really high quality audio equipment and, and background music and breathing. And, and we take people through our edge sequence, if you will, which is, uh, something with pre-cooling so before you get in the tub a couple breaths your actual intra-cooling so in the tub instruction and then post-cooling so that warm-up period so that's a framework that we've brought and and we we run with so you can access and you charge for that no we give it to all of our community members and um that that are that are in the in that are in our ecosystem and then we do two or three times a week we do live breathing sessions our director of coaching and performance a guy named samuel whiting he's amazing one of the top in the industry truly one of the he was one of the first North American Wim Hof Method instructors. So he's he's got a lot of experience. And so he's on there. One of our ambassadors is on there two to three times a week leading. Can someone like me join it? For you, yeah, maybe. We'll okay. talk about it. Because <laughs> that's the one thing I've always wanted. I'm like, it'd be really cool to connect yes. this. And and not every not every company does it because they're they're attacking it from a different vantage right. point. Right. And so a part of me is like, oh, how do yeah. I how do I get that with that? Well, that's something that that to me is something when you talk there's about democratizing. Like yeah. that to me is something that that I'm really passionate about. And I think there's a big opportunity to do so more of that, which is how can you know how can we give that because because we recognize that we recognize that everybody out there that's getting started on their cold immersion journey or, or whatever stage they're at in their cold immersion journey can benefit from not only the, the resources, the instruction, but the community around it as well. And so that to me feels like there's a lot of scalability around that. It's something that we're increasingly putting more time, energy, and resources into building out because there's not anything quite like that out there. And that's what I think about too, like just from a, if, from a macro level, no one's won that space. Right. And that's okay. a whole different space, but totally. it's like very tangential. It can serve as a Trojan horse in some way. That's right. And so it's like exciting. Yeah. And no one's and, won it yet. And, and then there's also like from the business, like the game of playing business, like the, the, there's a fun part of that too, which is like, it'd be really cool to have somebody sitting in another tub or it doesn't matter wherever they are, or whatever they're doing. And then they're tuning into our programming. Like that's cool. It's because we can be able to reach so many more people that yeah. way. Yeah. Any dream collabs or any collabs that you're pretty pumped about? Uh, one of my favorite collabs I'm pumped about right now is with Whoop. So the, the wearable tech company, um, we've, we're very grateful to be partnered with their, with their performance department and their Whoop labs. So their doctor, Dr. Kristen Holmes, who is their VP of performance. Um, we're working on some really cool stuff, both from some forward thinking research that we're looking to conduct in the space. Cause there's a whole white space of opportunity. Big time, big time. A lot of old science. Yep. They've got a couple of our tubs out in their Whoop labs in Boston right now. So that's a fantastic collab and just I love the alignment and how they think about how they think about their research and their science and, and furthering and, and bringing more than just a product like that's something very aligned to what we say being more than just a tub that's really important for us so um, so whoop is cool. one I'm really stoked about and for sure let's talk so when you go in it like yeah I, I guess I'll just talk about my journey and then sure you yeah. can, we can talk about yours so for me it was always like I started at 44 degrees doing uh, six minutes and then I just kept trying to do six minutes at lower temperatures. Yeah. And then I found it when I got to the 38 degree mark, I felt like I got the hit, so to speak, mm -hmm. in like one to three minutes. Yeah. And the need to stay in it for six kind of felt silly. It was yeah. like, I'm just going to be colder, but I'm, I got it. I got the bump, so sure. to speak, you know? And yeah. so, and then I've just went to play with it. So now I, then I went 50 degree mm. water that wasn't moving at all. And I felt like that was a hot tub. I was like, that, <laughs> this is doing nothing for me. So I was like, that's interesting. Mm. And then I went back to 44 degrees and I was like, okay, so I've gotten kind of used to this mm. point. The good news is I don't feel like I have to go colder. 
So that feels good. Where good. I'm not like I'm not chasing 33 degrees right. for like 30 seconds. I feel like 38's a sweet spot. It's great. Is it that personal? Like when you do it, is it is it a minute? Is it three minutes? I know the science will say do 11 minutes during the week, but that doesn't that doesn't really compute to me personally. Yeah. So I don't I don't know. But how do, what is your? Yeah, it's it's such an interesting conversation, and I love one of the things that you said that I just want to highlight is that. I'm playing with it. And I think that's the key truly because it is, it is different and it's different every day depending on who you are and what you need. One of the, one of the phrases that we use a lot is a goal oriented approach to cold water immersion because the truth is it depends. What are you looking for? Yeah. Are you looking to recover from a long run you just did? Are you looking for a quick pick me up? Are you looking for uh, a wake cycle to get your body activated? Are you looking for a sleep cycle before you go down and, and come down before bed? So what are, what is, what is the goal that you're looking for? Because that will, determine our dosage that will determine the time and temperature that we want to partake in. So, okay. it, it, so we want to look at it a little bit more flexibly. So it's like, like a that. matrix. In, yeah, in exactly. That way. Totally. So that makes a lot of sense. Actually. And one of the things that I always tell people as well is starting. And it's funny because you know, you, you adapt and you're someone that's very cold adapted. Yeah. And if you get in 50 and it feels like a hot tub now, that's amazing. It's and that's wild. really cold adapted. It's wild. <laughs> it's but wild. For, it's, it's wild. It's totally wild. Yeah. It it's blew amazing. me away by the way. I'm like, this is not good. Right. Like, this is not normal. It's fantastic though. It's, it, it's like, cool. you've got great stores of your brown fat, that brown adipose tissue. You. You've got a nice high concentration of that, which is helping you from a thermogenesis and creating heat standpoint, which is great. Thank and you. And there's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so you got some good brown fat. That's going to be the new compliment. Um, the big thing that I always explain to to beginners as well is that we, let's look at the research that we have out there. One one of the papers that you referenced, which is looking at seeing the benefit of cold water immersion as it's relating to the boost in the norepinephrine and that adrenaline and the dopamine, which are some of the most common cited benefits, especially today. That wasn't done at 38 degrees or 33 degrees or even 45 degrees. That's right. It was done yeah. at 57 degrees, 14 yeah. Celsius. Cold shower, basically. Cold, exactly. Yeah. And like you said, 11, 12 minutes per week in totality. So I always like to start with beginners is 55 degrees, two minutes is like a really nice beginner dose. It's For someone that's a beginner, especially if they're a little bit apprehensive, they're going to get plenty of cold chalk from that and it's going to be intense. And my preference is that someone has a good first experience and they're like, okay, that was intense, but I did it. And like, now I want to see what's more. And I think that that's something that a lot of people do get wrong in the space right now. Cause it's, you know, it's the hot, sexy, trendy thing to do is like, get in, you want to see the ice. You want to, you know, you got to be in there for 10 minutes, like join the 10 minute club and be in the ice for 10 minutes. It's like, ah, no, I worry about that for <laughs> a lot of different reasons, especially yeah. because you only got one chance to have someone everybody only has one chance to have their first ice bath experience. And I, my preference is that that becomes a really inspiring and empowering experience. And we know why we're doing it, not just like get in and suffer and we're going to take a cool picture and it's gonna be great. It's like, no, what is, can this actually do for you? What are you getting in? So it's a spectrum. It's, it's looking at it more with these more different variables. Like for me, the temperature that I'm loving right now is 47 degrees. Like that 47 to 50 window feels great for me right now. And I'll be in there for two to three minutes. And like, that feels good. And then sometimes I feel inspired to, to get into the tub a little bit colder or stay for a little bit longer. Like this morning I went for a long run. So I was in for more like five to six minutes. Um, I tend to not time myself anymore. I, I like to really go for That's timelessness. What, I, do, I do the same you thing. The same now? Yeah. yeah. I'm just kind of like, uh, I feel yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. You feel it. And that, and, and that, in my opinion, that's the opportunity here. And that's what I really seek to empowering people with is that like, you're your best coach, you're your best healer, you're your best teacher, you, you know, you're your best doctor and you have within you those answers. And so when you're in there and you're in a really in tune place, your mind is quiet because it has to be, you're in your breath, you're in your zone you know, you, you get that feeling, you know, when it's time, you're like, okay, cool. I feel like this is complete. And you can play with like, as Andrew Huberman says, those walls, right? That wall of resistance. It's like, cool. Let me breathe through this a little bit more. Okay, cool. I'm over that. That feels good. Or no, you know what? I respect this wall and it's time for me to get out and, and building that sovereignty, that independence and that, that communication with that inner voice is something that is, I think the big opportunity here. So as you were saying this, I realized for me, the reason I do it more often than not I play a lot of tennis. I play like maybe two hours of tennis a day. And Great. so there's for sure benefits for me going in anything cold totally. just to sort of reduce the inflammation. And I've noticed I can play more tennis because of it. So that's like, check that box. Cool. But I real I realize I do it more for mental. Like mm -hmm. I think as, and you know, this as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur starting a business, not every day is, is glamorous. And so naturally, uh, for some reason for me doing the cold plunge every day is like, this is the hardest thing I have to do. I'm Bingo. choosing torture in some way and everything else is going to be pretty straightforward. And that yeah. just jives. But to go back to the science of it, I would love if someone published a paper being like, this is, this is, it's rewiring mental circuits. Mm. It's making people think differently. There's something to be said about sort of hitting those walls, but what is that literally doing right. in the brain right. long-term, not just, you know, and that, right. that's the thing that 
I, you know, hopefully I'm, I'm, that's the science I want to see. Yeah. Agree. Both that from a qualitative standpoint, but from a quantitative standpoint as well, what are some of these biometrics we can measure that can show the effect of that? So, so I, I'm totally on the same page with you with that. And, and that's some of the stuff that I'm like most excited about when it comes towards furthering the space and the education, and the research of how this can be approachable. And, and just to, to, to riff on what you said there around as an entrepreneur going in and doing that hard thing, right? Like, yeah, we know that as a, as a high performer, as an entrepreneur, eating the frog, so to speak, or, or going in, that's that hormetic stress. It's a hormetic stressor. It's a willful conscious dose of stress that you're putting on your body. And there's great benefit. Like we know the science behind that, the hormesis and hormetic stress and what that can do for our body. It's fantastic. And it's such an important part of my daily habit and routine and knowing that's a tool, like you said, of being able to be like, I'm going to go do the thing that sucks right now that I don't want to do, yeah. but how can we take, cause then that becomes in a practice arena. And the question I often pose is, how can we take the practice out of the ice bath? Where are those everyday ice bath moments? You know, just this morning I had one when I got a, when I got a, cust- a call from, from someone that we're doing a partnership with who was a little flustered about certain things. And it was just like, oh, that hurts. It's a little uncomfortable. Okay, mm-hmm. let me breathe. This is an ice bath moment. Like, how am I going to lean in? Okay, let me just get him on the phone and call him. It's like, let me lean into that, like, right where I feel like I'm throttling back. What if we just took that one step, that one step further, right when we're like kind of throttling back because that's, that's the edge zone as we call it. Like that's the zone and you take that step and that's where the growth happens and that's where things become easier as well. So it's like we're always right kind of pushing up yeah. against it. I think most people learn this when they have children mm. is my guess. Do you have children? No, no, but it's like I've seen enough people become like morph into somebody else after children because so much is out it's of their control, point. but it's constant especially when the kids are like very little, it's constant. You're, you're just problem solving. Yeah. Why are you crying? I don't know. What do I do? How do I fix it? I'm mm-hmm. not sure. I'm going to the doctor 14 times a day. <laughs> you know, you're just like, there's a mess. You got to watch your child to get a vaccine. Totally. You know, you got to feel totally. that pain, but it's not your pain. How do totally. I, you know what I mean? And so it's like this constant game of, oh my God, whack-a-mole. It's a good point. And so I think that's when people experience it. And so, yeah, I love it. Well, listen, when, where can people help? Where can people buy? Yeah. Where can they join the, the Legends Club? Yeah, exactly. I mean, our, our Instagram is kind of our go-to social media place. It's our community hub right now. So find us on Instagram at Edge Theory Labs, personally at, at Joshua Dean Church, and our website, edgetheorylabs.com. We have a great science page on our website, and we're constantly adding to it. So that's something very cool to check out if you want to go learn a little bit more about use case and benefits and all the way down to the actual studies that we reference. We spent a lot of time on building that page to, to bring something together that, that felt like this feels like a really great standalone resource for whoever. So I encourage you to go check that out. We also have a free cold water immersion 101 mini course where you can understand a little bit about the benefits. There's a guided breath work session in there. There's a guided audio immersion to do your first one, whether it's a cold shower or a cold immersion. If you're a beginner like that, highly recommend checking that out. You can find that on our website or on our Instagram. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, just what people can do to support is is to take control, take control of their lives, take control of their breath, understand that they've got this body that's working for them and that's that's whispering wisdom to them and they have the ability to tap into that. And, and if they lead from that place, leading from that place of intuition, then that's what they can do to support. Joshua, a legend. Thank you, brother. Appreciate, appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you so much for the support and making it to the end of the episode. If you haven't already, please leave a review and share the episode with your friends. If you never want to miss a beat on all things entrepreneurship, make sure to follow us on socials for daily content. See you next Tuesday for another great episode.